our series, but before we do that, this is week two, by the way. I'll go ahead and roll the uh, promo video for you, Sunday, right? Yeah, roll that. All right, and tonight, my title should be there, right? We're going to be week number two, talking about sexual purity. Whoa, did he say sex? Yes, he did. But before we continue on, watch this video. Hey, guess what? We're getting ready to talk about sex. Yeah, that's right. I said it. Sex, 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 sex. And now for a segment I like to call Vintage Sex Education. That purity certain glands begin to work, and our bodies begin to shake. But what are all these glands? Yeah. And what's giving? Uh, maybe. Oh, uh, look. When we talk about sex, you may get a little uncomfortable. A little fidgety in your seat. And whatever you do, don't make eye contact with the person sitting next to you while we're talking about sex. I'm just messing with you. But seriously, <laughs> right now, I want us to do something that is awesome. We do this at every Thanksgiving in my house. So on the count of three, I want everybody to shout out sex. I'm totally kidding about Thanksgiving. We don't do that at all. It'll be gross. Here we go. One, two, three. Sex! See? Nobody got hurt. And the way God intended, sex is a very beautiful thing. In fact, the Bible is full of verses explaining God's plan and purpose for sex. Look, there's some words out there. I know them, you know them, and then make your giga box go off. <laughs> so let's get about the way. Sexuality, intercourse, procreation, virgin, virginity, second generation virginity, best virginity. What? Adultery, fornication, sexy, sexual immorality, kissing. What kind do you like? French, Spanish, Indonesian? First base, second base, third base. Oh, right. Some of these reactions to baseball games are used to describe are designed specifically for use in the confines of marriage. Passion, patience, purity, STD, HIV, LSD, KFC. What? Oh, wait. No, no, the last two are drugs and chicken. They don't have anything to do with sex. <laughs> okay. Are we good? Because listen, sex, it is a beautiful thing that God gave us to enjoy in this great life we have. So sit back, relax, and listen up while we talk about sex. Woo! Yeah. So. We are going to be talking about a tough subject. We are obviously going to be talking about sexual purity. And so before we continue on, let's just recite the theme verse for the series, Pursuing Purity. It is Leviticus 11.45. And it says, Therefore be holy because I am holy. Everybody, let's say that together on the count of three. Ready? One, two, three. Therefore be holy, because I am holy. Let's say it again, all together, so we can try to memorize the verse. Ready? One, two, three. Therefore be holy, because I am holy. Good, good. So, we're going to, like I said, be talking about sexual purity in our Pursuing Purity series, week two. And I'm going to use a term tonight called sexual immorality. He even said that in the video there. And sexual immorality, by definition, what it is is this. It's any sexual activity that is engaged in outside of marital relationship between a man and a woman. So it's a sexual relationship that's engaged in outside of marriage. And so uh, before we move on, I want to read scripture passage. I want to read 1 Corinthians 6, 12 through 20. Pop that up there and let's follow along with me as you read. 
says this, everything is permissible for me, but not everything is beneficial. Everything is permissible for me, but I will not be mastered by anything. <laughs> food for the stomach and the stomach for food, but God will destroy them both. The body is not meant for sexual morality, but for the Lord and the Lord for the body. By His power, God raised the Lord from the dead, and He will raise us also. Do you not know that your bodies are members of Christ Himself? Shall I then take the members of Christ and unite them with a prostitute? Never. Do you not know that he who unites himself with a prostitute is one with her in body? For it is said the two will become one flesh. But he who unites himself with the Lord is one with him in spirit. Flee from sexual morality. All other sins a man commits are outside of his body. But he who sins sexually sins against his own body. Do you not know that your body is the temple of the Holy Spirit who is in you, whom you have received from God? You are not your own. You were bought at a price. Therefore, honor God with your bodies. So I was thinking about that passage and, and that we're gonna, what we're going to talk about. And I asked myself some of these questions. One of them is, have I always treated my body as though it was the place that the Holy Spirit lived? Something to think about. Have you always treated your body as a place as though the Holy Spirit has lived there? Uh, another question is, have I always honored God with my body? Have I always... Ooh, you throw. <laughs> have I always honored God with my body? Another one is, have I ever allowed my body to do something that I shouldn't have let it do? Have I ever done anything sexually that would be considered inappropriate or immoral? Have I guarded myself adequately against sexual temptation? So those are some questions that I was at that I that I had to ask myself in preparing for this series. And so what I want to ask is, how about you? How about you? Have you always treated your body as though it were the place that the Holy Spirit lived? Yeah. Have you always treated your body as though it was the place where the Holy Spirit lived? In other words, when you accept Christ as your personal Lord and Savior, then the Holy Spirit is supposed to take residence inside of you. So, if, you, if, if you're in here tonight and you would say, I'm a born-again believer in Christ. I've accepted Christ into my life. And the Holy Spirit is in you. Okay? So, with that in mind, since you've been a Christian or even before, definitely not before, right? So you would say, no, I haven't always treated my body that way, right? Because we haven't always been a Christian. Alright? Another question is, have you always honored God with your body? Most of us would say no. Probably all of us. Have you ever allowed yourself to do something that you shouldn't have let it do? Most of us would say what? Yeah. yeah. Have you ever done something sexually that can be considered inappropriate or immoral? Some of us would say yes, right? Do you adequately guard yourself against sexual temptation? Do you guard yourself Against sexual temptation, are you watching out? Why are we talking about this? We're talking about this because staying sexually pure before God is something that not everyone is doing, right? Right? Y'all go to school, y'all in high school, middle school, and not everyone is staying pure before God sexually, are they? So that's why we're talking about that. Listen, according to the statistic, most of us are being impure. Most of us are being impure. Uh, the National Campaign to Prevent Teen Pregnancy reports that 47% of all teens have been sexually active by 12th grade. 47%. <laughs> it says 46% of them are females and 48% of them are males. 
47% of all teens, and out of that 47%, 46% of females, 40% of males. Alright? Listen to this. This is a, uh, just a, uh, a statistic that came out of West Virginia. Out of West Virginia, listen. 54% of West Virginia teens have had sex at least once by 12th grade. Calm down. Shouldn't be a I'm sure that it may be more here in Florida because we're a bigger state. If 54% of West Virginia teens have had sex at least once by the time of 12th grade, probably 65% in our state, right? 67, so I was close. Listen, in West Virginia, just a little country town or a little country state, 54% males and 53% females. Listen to this. In ninth grade, 37% of teenagers have had sex. In ninth grade. In 10th grade, and this is, this is where it gets bad. 54% of 10th grade. That number goes up drastically by the time 10th grade goes around. In 11th grade, it's 62%. And by 12th grade, it's 65 In near Florida, it's 67 Listen to this. 17% of teens have had four or more sexual partners. 17%. 41% of teens have had sex in the past three months. 41% of teens have had sex in the past three months. Who are they asking? But these statistics probably aren't shocking to you. They probably aren't shocking to you, are they? Why? Because you know what's going on, don't you? You know that the majority of teens all of you guys know that the majority of teens aren't being morally pure, right? Yeah. Maybe even some of you have been involved in immorality yourselves, right? Immorality is prevalent everywhere. As a matter of fact, some people question if it is even a problem as long as it's protected sex. Did you hear that? Immorality is so prevalent everywhere that people even question if it's even a problem, as long as it's protected, they're like, all right, you know, just get some protection, you're good. You know, worldly parents will even give their kid a condom, put it in their wallet, whatever. Crazy, man. However, listen to this. Despite the way that the world looks at it, God's plan is for everyone to be pure sexually. 